please welcome the artist, Castles. So, my name is Castles, and it's an honor to speak to you today. I'd like to thank uh, Oregon State University, specifically the School of Arts and Communications, and the College of Liberal Arts for making my visit possible. I'd especially like to thank Assistant Professor of Photography and fellow artist Carrie, and all his efforts in organizing to bring me here, because it was a little bit crazy. Um, I'd also like to additionally thank Shelley Jordan and Julie Green for welcoming me to their classrooms today and sharing their work with me. And finally, I'd like to thank you all for being here. So about a year ago, last March, I received some tragic news that James Luna, one of the most important performance artists that I have known, had a heart attack and suddenly passed on. And so I've been thinking a lot about James in recent days, the lessons he taught us, and the importance of his presence on this planet. He said, in performance art, you show by example. I'm not out there to preach. People can make up their own minds. And in the beginning, he said that he created his artwork as a form of public therapy. Having a master's degree in counseling, he knew that the first step in recovery was speaking directly to the issues at hand. In the artifact piece, Looney used his body to make a powerful commentary on the objectification of First Nation cultures and museum exhibitions, and on the tendency to freeze Native people in the past, presenting them as artifacts rather than living members of contemporary cultures. He wore a loincloth and lay still in the display case surrounded by labels. Other cases contained personal ceremonial objects. But in an unsettling twist, the viewer finds the subject of their voyeurs and looking right back at them. You see, James Luna knew something. It's that visibility is a trap. And this is something that I think a lot about in relationship to my own subjectivity, the increasing representation of trans identity through art and popular culture in recent years has been nothing if not paradoxical. Trans visibility is touted as a sign of a liberal society, but it has coincided with a political moment marked both by heightened violence against trans people, especially trans women of color, and by the suppression of trans right under civil law. There's a new collection of essays published by MIT called Trap Door that grapples with these very contradictions. And it posits that trans people are frequently offered up as doors, entrances to visibility and recognition that are actually traps, accommodating trans bodies and communities only insofar as they cooperate with dominant norms. The volume speculates about a third term, perhaps uniquely suited for our time, the concept of a trapdoor, neither an entrance or an exit, but a secret passageway leading elsewhere. So I had the pleasure of meeting James Luna at the Hammer Museum in Los Angeles, and James told me a story of chatting to a friend, a fellow artist on his reservation, regarding his frustrations about being pigeonholed in the art world as a native artist. He told me his friend looked at him with perplexity and said, you think you're in a box, but for us, you're on a pedestal. You actually have a voice. And I've thought a lot about that in relationship to my own practice, being constantly and, for the most part, referred to as a trans artist. And of course that is part of who I am, but it is certainly not the summation of my entire practice. But there was still a certain profundity in Luna's anecdote, which reinforced the importance of standing up and speaking out. In addition to being an artist, working in performance, film, sculpture, and photography, I've worked as a personal trainer for 22 years. And when I was young, I was really sick. From ages 9 to 13, I had undiagnosed gallbladder disease, which doesn't really sound like a big deal. But when disease goes untreated, it goes rogue. And this is usually a problem for alcoholic six-year-old men, not young people. So doctors would send my mother and I back from the emergency room time and again, saying there was nothing wrong with me, despite that I had been profusely vomiting bile for hours on end. And it was only when these bile ducts, ru ducts ruptured and the whites of my eyes turned green that the doctors took me seriously. And when they did indeed finally open me up, I was literally rotting from the inside out. And so this experience with illness taught me a powerful lesson that we can't blindly follow systems that are already in place. We have to self-educate, self-motivate, and push beyond what is spoon-fed to us.